This is the structural geology course from Explore Rock Solutions Geológicas Lima, Peru. Online courses applied to geology. Module 1, Fundamentals. In this module, we are going to talk about each one of these topics, which will help us to understand the concepts and basic terminology that are more frequent in structural geology. By this, our goal is that every attendant might be able to have the necessary insights either for a fully understanding of this theoretical course or aimed to the pragmatical use in the process of tectonic interpretation for any exploration purpose. Well, what is structural geology? It is one of several bailiwicks of geology that allows geologists to understand the earth crust in terms of its deformation, and not only the one which is present nowadays, but also which has occurred in the geological past, whereby it involves millions of years before this era. So, the geological processes include the formation and the generation of physical features that, in other words, are printed now on rocks. When we talk about the formation, we must go straight to the main cause that is related to and such cause is named by stress, which comes to be an abstract vector magnitude that it clearly exists in nature and into the space. From a mathematical point of view, the stress is defined as force between area. That is to say, as we see it through an ideal view, the stress works uniformly over each unit of rock. Nevertheless, rock bodies actually show up physical features that are so evident that indicate stresses do not behave by means of an ideal kind of mechanics. Thus, deformation directly relates to different stresses over the earth crust. The major of them is the normal stress or sigma n, which tends to be orthogonal respect to a reference plane, i.e. the earth crust. In turn, according to physics laws, sigma n puts along the rock body under the form of sigma s or best known as shear stress. Well now, sigma s also creates its own sort of punctual deformation into every space orientations and along every point of deformation. And it is then when we refer that the stress does not work uniformly over any surface. By this, normal stresses are going to be orthogonal respect to the special planes along the three dimensions, either over xx plane, yy plane, or cc planes, wherein the shear stresses are distributed. This kind of stress assemblage will be taking place, and that is what we know as deformation. And since now, deformation is appreciated as a physical pattern that results observable, tangible, and certainly measurable. Thence, deformation can be displayed along fault surfaces and folded strata. But its some faults are discontinuities that seen in first view may correspond to simple lines, but in fact, they are oriented planes in space. In general terms, they are known as secondary structures. In three dimensions, they have a finite extent and they display a clear displacement along its surface, such as it is possible to see in the indicate movement linked to the red arrow's orientation. In accordance with the fault inclination, they can split up a rock body into a foot wall and hanging wall blocks. In cross section, the hanging wall may be bounded by two folds whose inclinations are towards the same direction, where such blocks experience either an ascendant or descendant movement respect the foot wall. Thus, the kind of movement will depend on several factors which will be tackled in subsequent modules. One type of faults widely known comes to be the boundaries between tectonic plates. In such boundaries, the faulting is very intensive along the regions where it occurs, so it is normally to think that tectonic plates interaction implies a huge physical activity that has been present since millions of years before this era. As a result, for instance, mountains took place within continents such as the Andean Belt and the opening of 
extensional bridges in oceans. Taking into account other example, it is logic as of Nazca plate subduction below the South American plate to have a displacement which follows a specific direction that is best known as plate convergence. In a smaller scale, with a horizontal view, structures can show a well-defined detail between them. What it normally happens because they get together and geologists have the common systematics of representing them followed by symbology in order to distinguish the position of foot wall and hanging wall blocks. In this example, the hanging wall block has a displacement southwards. With the fact what falls as discontinuities, they usually exist under the form of marked lines associated to oblique or aligned fractures into sedimentary and or volcanic rocks whose layers have clear displacements. This layer will allow to establish a sort of particular movement. Plus, it is very relevant to have clear that the faulting has a fractured nature. Many times this topic comes in handy because even though the magnitude of faults displacement could vary from one fault to another, their geometrical orientations may preserve the same kind of movement. In this picture, a counterclockwise rotation allows to see a better orientation of fault planes and the uplift of the fault wall block respect to the descending hanging wall block. A very classic concept in field geology has to do with the fault displacement and it is tells us that faults along its proper surface must have the same displacements in every position you could see them. However, this is too hard to find because the field stress, nature and rheology of rock influence, for instance, that the false tips tends to have irregular movements. Especially, this happens when one of the fault tips is located in a site where the lithology can produce remarkable displacements, such as the case in mud rocks or layers which reach content of gypsum, how you can figure out around the picture in the left. Something similar happens with the example of the right. If some place shows a bunch of faults, there is also the chance to have others that cannot reach the surface. If they did, at least the most direct evidence will correspond to alienation poor to gently exposed. So the previous explanation stands for why the fault displacements are not necessarily equal, as well as not every fault can outcrop in surface. For one side, it is very important to have a well craft map for being sure about the horizontal fault prolongation, meanwhile for another, the recognition of which rocks have fragile or ductile behavior will help out to identify the vertical range along the stratigraphy. In many cases, the conception of what we know about faults includes their visualization as a unique line that cuts off a rock body. Sometimes they can be isolated, but there's also the chance to watch them together. Furthermore, in field observations, they have orientations and similar displacements that outcrop too close from a major fault surface. In detail, every fault tries to behave in a similar way respect to the major structural system. An application of this argument in field observations is commonly used when the fault movement is partially or totally unknown, so that, among other factors, its movement will be inferred by its proper association with well-known pre-established faults. Every now and then, this method may be used for a quick kinematics within a structural system, especially when you want to report if every structure of the system has formed in the same time, although it will be necessary to check them out in detail for getting an accurate interpretation. Besides, the resulting track as a fault surface is a consequence of deformation, which in turn tends to propagate towards new areas within the very rock body. What it involves 
a minor component of the formation in comparison with a curve into the fault curve. As from this, the rock strata show markers as bends and foliations near to the fault plane, but this is not the case for igneous rocks whose displacements are entirely defined by foliations as a part of kinematic indicators. Such bends, or best called as drag faults, have a specific geometry in function of the ascending foot wall or hanging wall blocks. In this way, drag faults are good indicators of how movement was produced. The bending degree depends on the competence of the rock, e.g. for a sedimentary succession, the formation will have fragile behavior with the existence of high angle strike faults affecting, for example, again, sandstones, while along mock rocks it will have adaptive behavior in terms of the presence of faults whose geometry would be more inflected. In this field picture, from left to right, it is noted there are at least three well-marked structures, along with two stratigraphic levels that are not continuous. To the right, the first level is composed by the yellowish layer of sandstone that is progressively more brushed to the lower part of the picture. Above such layer, outcrops a second layer of mud rocks in violet color. The red rectangle indicates the location of the structures which have a well-defined bend by drag. They are oblique respect to the fault plane seen in the lower part of the structure that in turn has the same movement. In the most common cases, the bend previously mentioned are called as foliations. As well as the marker that is around the contact between the sandstones and mud rocks have bends by drag. By this, it is easily to establish that such marker is an indicator of the collapse of the hanging wall block located around the center of the picture. By its part, faults are the direct manifestation of the stress's convergence, which transforms a solid since a non-deformed state to another whose shape will be distinct from the original, being these processes known as folding. This geometrical change has mainly its roots on ductile behavior. Then, a good way to see the effects of falling is through the stresses that are involved in tectonic plates. Along with the displacement of faults in regional scale, faults also intervene with the uplift of mountain belts. This last feature is very important due to it was mentioned previously. Faulting implies the presence of drag bends near to the deformation area, resulting in the classic concept that faults are formed as evidence of tectonic convergent stresses. But now it is widely known that not every fault is formed by pure tectonics. Due to the existence of similar structures that come from sedimentation and gravitational overload in sedimentary basins, given birth to sedimentary structures or slams. A very generalized way to distinguish both of those kinds can be made by means of knowing the geological setting in wherein the formation is observed. This sketch shows two pictures where the lower one has a white line belonging to a marker layer that from our position until too far in the picture it can be appreciated as a series of folds marked by white lines. In the same way, in the same way, this upper turn fold shows straight and inclined flanks that change of inclination towards the left part of the picture. Yet, that deformation degree from the fold curve is almost null upwards. Meanwhile, the lower part of its curve has a strata with random dispositions that evidence a greater concentration of deformation in comparison with younger strata. In other case, if you simply look seen sedimentary faults or slumps, it is pretty sure that you may realize they have a deformation style that resembles the ones checked in tectonic faults. In counterpart to tectonic faults and due to the genesis of seen sedimentary faults, they do not have foliations or bends. As usual, they appear in a strata with any presence of remarkable discontinuities. Although, during observations in field, one very outcrop can show slams 
and traces of tectonic folding. However, this fact can be ambiguous because it seems to be impossible to have such kind of structures for the same event. So, the best pragmatical way to distinguish them in time is to look closer for accurate descriptions that necessarily must be accompanied with a detailed geological cartography of the area. In this manner, we have finished the module 1. This last slide contains the whole set of sources and reference that has been used. In module 2, we are going to talk about how the different stresses field work in the space and which implications they lead to the very moment of faulting. We hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.